we are going to share as our call to worship some words from Psalm 130. Uh, if you had bread of any kind for your breakfast, uh, read the, the pale words. If you didn't have bread in any kind for your breakfast, read the dark lines. Okay, Psalm 130. From the depths of my despair, I call to you, Lord. Hear my cry, O Lord. Listen to my call for help. If you kept the record of our sins, who could escape being condemned? But you forgive us, so that we should stand before you. I wait eagerly for the Lord's help, and in his word I trust. Israel, trust in the Lord, because his love is constant and he is always willing to save. He will save his people, Israel, from all their sins. Amen. I thought it would be the other way round. I thought loads of people had toast for breakfast these days and, and, and very few would have anything else. But obviously, we are not a, a church of toast eaters. We sing now a hymn that takes up the, the words from that psalm, um, a hymn by the Hillsong group, Mighty to Save.
we're using the, the third order of Holy Communion um, this morning. So we turn to a, a prayer of glory, of praise, and then a prayer of confession. And then the collect for today. Let's pray. Give us, O oh God, a vision of your glory, that we may worship you in spirit and in truth, and offer the praise of glad and thankful hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you came into the world to save sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have brought sorrow and hurt to you, to others and to ourselves. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You give yourself to heal and renew us and to bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and keep us in life eternal. Amen and the collect for today. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, so may we pass through things temporal, that we finally lose not things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. There is one reading this morning from, well, we've had two because we've had Psalm 130 already, but there is one, one reading from the New Testament, uh, quite a short passage from John chapter 6. The lesson is taken from John chapter 6, verse 35 and verses 45 to 51. Jesus, the bread of life. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Thanks be to God for his word. I am the bread of life. Um, if I were to, to show a picture of a, a, a um, steep street with a lad with a bicycle, what sort of bread would that um, make you think of? Hovis, yeah. Hovis was invented in 1885. Did you know that? The rubbish you find when you read things on the internet. Hovis was invented by a baker called Stony Smith in 1885, and it was a new type of bread full of wheat germ. 
Uh, the brown was bread, and initially not many people were tempted to go away and, and eat it and, and stop eating their, li their nice white bread. Um, and so he, um, he had competition to, to find a name. Instead of calling it Smith's Patented Germ Bread, which I don't think has that ring to it, does it? Um, and the winner came up with the word hovis from the Latin homo, homonis vis, the strength of man. So hovis was born. Can you tell your hovis from other bread? Right. Oh, thank you, my dear. Right. Would you want to come and stand here? Right. Stand next to your sister. Right. Should we... Do you want to discover what's on, on his as well? Can you see it? What's that one? Can you read it? Right, okay. So, do you think Thomas is a Tovis? Anybody think Thomas is a Tovis? No? Why not? Too thin, and it didn't taste right. So, yeah, well, sadly, it's, it's not Hovis. Which one is it? It's not Hovis, no. It's not Hovis. It is this one. I, I, I tried very hard to get three that were all the same shape, but it is simply medium sliced wholemeal, yeah? Okay, so is, is mine Hovis or is Catherine's Hovis? Hands up for mine being Hovis. Hands up for Catherine's being Hovis. Do you want to reveal? Yeah. Catherine's is Hovis. And mine isn't Hovis. Thank you very much. Right, we better put this down. You better brush the crumbs off your hands as well. Right, Brill. Off you go then. Let's go. Right. So some people knew their Hovis, and some people didn't. Of course, Hovis is just a brand name. There's nothing, nothing, nothing good about it or bad about it. It's just a brand name of, of a sort of bread. But it's supposed to be good for you. Um, we're going to think about bread a bit more uh, after our next hymn. Um, you may have noticed there's a table at the back where they're going to play Jenga in a minute and make a lot of noise. Um, and they've got various activities about bread and stuff like that. So uh, by the end of this morning's service, uh, Catherine and Thomas and, and Mum and Dad will know a lot about the bread of life, and we will as well. We're going to take up our offering for the work of God in this church and community. God, we thank you for everything that you give us. 
and we offer you today these gifts of money and we add them to those that are given online and by direct debit and in other ways. And we ask that you will use them and use us to build up the kingdom of God. Amen. We sing again 580. Come, Lord, be our guest. Oh, you don't need to know the number, do you? It's on the screen. It's just in singing the faith, it's 500. Come, Lord, be our guest. Find your way among us. as a communion hymn um, and I thought it fitted at this point in our worship as we're, we're thinking of, of gathering around the table, yes, later on but, but thinking of those words of Jesus recorded by John about bread and being the bread of life and a text from that passage in John, John chapter 6 verse 35, Jesus said I am the bread of life you heard that before? Yeah, several times, many times. Did you hear it last week? Did you ever preach last week's six of the lecture or not? I don't know, I wasn't here. Jesus has been followed round by a crowd for some time. This is where it fits in, in the story. He's been followed round by a crowd for some time. He's beginning to tire. He has captivated many, confused many, confronted many. And some people have got what they wanted and some people haven't. 
and the crowd have been following their leader. And Jesus has been saying all sorts of things to them. Uh, and the crowd have been hungry, and Jesus' response is to say, I am the bread of life. I am the bread from heaven. I am the living bread. And if you feed on this bread, you will live forever. And as I was preparing uh, over the last couple of weeks and mulling over these words of Jesus and the other readings set for today, which include that psalm we read earlier, Psalm 130, um, and then the words from Paul in Ephesians where he describes how the Christian community should be living. And, and the passage from 1 Kings, which I was tempted by for a while, uh, where David mourns the death of his son Absalom. And those of you who are musicians, there is a fantastic motet uh, where, where David mourns Absalom. Oh, Absalom, Absalom, my love. And yeah, we sang it in choir last term. But... and, and I was mulling over those, the, the readings. Um, and we were pottering along the, the Grand Union Canal on, the, on our boat, um, on the Leicester Line. Uh, and the plan was to, to go out of the marina, turn left, go down to, to the next bit of the marina, buy some gas, buy some diesel, turn around and then head north. Uh, we got out of the marina, we turned left. Uh, when we got to Welton Field Haven, um, they were shut. We don't open on Sundays, they said. We don't open on. So it's like, okay, we can't buy gas, we can't buy diesel, never mind. We'll go north. So we went north, uh, we went up Watford, we went through the tunnel, uh, we got to Crick. Um, and, then, and then we discovered, realised, whatever, that, that there was water coming into the boat and water being pumped out. And uh, we were all slightly worried. So um, the boat decided that our holiday was not going to be very long if we went to Crick, which is a very nice place. If you've never been to Crick, it's got, it's got a co-op. Um, it's, it's got a wharf that's up for sale. It's got a very nice boatyard and a very nice tree where I sat under for a whole day waiting for an engineer. Uh, so anyway, so lots of time to think, lots of time to ponder. Um, and, sh and the boat spent last week in a dry dock, and they still haven't found the hole, but never mind. Anyway, thinking about thinking while that was going on, um, it's been hard to to escape the news. Um, the items from the Olympics. Today is the, I can't believe today is the last is the last Sunday. We we must have missed a bit because I usually like watching the gymnastics, but I guess that was while I was sat under a tree at Crick. Um, but watching yesterday was just fabulous. As for, the, as for the climbing, I mean, how do they do it? How do you do sport climbing up a, a bit like that? Um, that lad decided when he was 12 he was going to win a gold medal, and he did. Um, then you've got the, the anti-parliament unrest in Bangladesh. Uh, you've got the pressure rising in Gaza. You've got airstrikes on Russia. And then, of course, the, the murder of those three little girls in Southport. And what came after? The social media fueled disinformation, the riots, and thankfully, the peace that has now come. I've been in awe of our Olympians, scared in the face of the riots and unrest, uneasy at the prisoner swaps, and devastated with those families and their friends and the neighbours and the communities that will never see their daughters grow and flourish. And I've tried to trace where is God in all of that. Can we have the first of those, those pictures, Andy? The first of the sailing, no, not that one, the other one. Sorry, the second of the sailing pictures. Well, it doesn't show as well there, does it? If you've got the coloured pictures, it shows much better. Uh, Neil and I were watching one of the sailing events, um, which I, I couldn't quite work out what they were doing, but they were battling the wind and the waves in Marseille, and they were tacking round the green boy. You can't see the green boy on that picture. Uh, they were avoiding other boats. They were tacking by sort of like launching themselves off. One of them turned right over up the right way and just carried on. Um, 
And, and the aerial shot, this is the fascinating bit, the aerial shot shows the, the way that they went. And it looks like the scribble of a toddler. It's loops and lines and a huge tangle web. You've got the, phot the, uh, the photographs on the sheets. Um, you can see, you know, obviously that is not the quickest route to get from A to B. Um, because if we go back to the other picture, see what they needed to do was start on the white line, go up to the circle, round the boy, and go back again. Yeah? Easy. You know, if you were running it, if you were swimming it, if you were canoeing it, but if you're on a boat, it was all a bit confusing. And it struck me that that was a, a wonderful metaphor for tracing where God is in life right now. It's all a bit more complicated than we would like it to believe. It's all a bit of a tangled web. Nothing is straightforward. Nothing goes in straight lines. You may think you want to go from the white line to the boy and back again. Somehow, life and waves and wind and, and other boats get in the way. The crowd following Jesus were a bit like that. They were hungry, but they were also greedy. And they felt they were entitled. And we read... Um, John tells us of how Jesus fed the 5,000, walked on water, even managed to get across the lake without the crowd realizing it. Um, so he did a bit of the circling round, and the crowd are still there. They're still following. The rumor of free food wasn't enough. They want more. They want more. They want more. Not just hungry, but greedy. And still hungry even though they've been fed. And so Jesus' response to them is to say, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the desert, and they died, but I will give you the bread from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. They're given a choice. Either you have the manna from heaven, that those white flakes that mysteriously... Uh, came down, appeared, whatever they were, in the desert um, when, when Moses was leading the people of Israel. Either you can have that, or you can have living bread. Either you can have death, or you can have life. It's, it's as stark and as polarized as it gets. And the choice is not just set before the crowds, then it's set before us too. And what do you choose? You can live the new life, this life that comes from God, not bound by the past or the context you have created for yourselves, not influenced by misunderstanding or mistakes you have made. Jesus says, I am the living bread here for you. Or, or you can carry on living a life and satisfying your hunger, hunger but being left hungry. There's being fed and being fed. The difference between, not quite the difference between the, the cheap little stuff, which tastes absolutely fine, or this fantastic germ bread called Hovis. I don't think that'll catch on, will it? Germ bread, especially since the pandemic. Uh, yeah, Hovis is a much better name. There's a difference between the basic, the better, and the best in bread and in all the things we hunger for. Uh, there, is, there is peace. What, you know, what do we hunger for? There is peace and success and success and fame and prosperity and results and wisdom and gold medals and food. I read an article in, I can't remember which paper it was, um, about people who had won gold medals being really, really frustrated that people were saying to them, what are you going to do next? Well, you've won a gold medal. What else is there for you? Um, and, and a lot of them say, well, I'm going to come back in four years' time and win another one. Uh, and that's brilliant. Or there's, there's, you know, there's various other championships. As if winning a gold medal is, is not enough. You've got to get more. 
Do we hunger for things that will last? Or things that are here today and gone tomorrow? When the Israelites tried to take extra manna in the desert, it became moldy and infested with maggots. It was only meant for today. But Jesus says, I am here for today and tomorrow. In the Greek that the the Gospel writer John uses, uh, we can discover, I think, also another that dimension to Jesus' words. When he talks about the 5,000 being fed, they were given artus prinotos. Artus prinotos, which is barley bread, bread made out of barley. And apparently this is the cheapest, worst, poorest quality bread that you can get your hands on. Made from the cheapest grain, often containing grit and other things that made it indigestible and ground your teeth down. A bit like the national loaf, although I don't think the national loaf had grit and talcum powder in it, did it? Did they bulk it out with other weird things, though? I don't know. I wasn't, I'm not old enough to have been party to that. But can you imagine it? Would you like that sort of bread? And I'm not sure what that says about the feeding of the 5,000. That's for another day. And how important they were to be given this this cheap, indigestible stuff. But when Jesus says, I'm the bread of life, the word he used for bread is is slightly different. It's artus zotes, which means the best sort of bread. Tesco's finest, Sainsbury's. Deluxe, whatever. I was going to get, when I was buying the bread on, on Friday and, and moseying around Lidl, I was going to get um, Lidl's Deluxe bread. But, but Lidl's Deluxe bread um, has got, and there are other supermarkets available, Lidl's Deluxe, Deluxe wholemeal bread has got bits in it. And I knew you wouldn't be fooled by that to think it was the same as Hobbes, because Hobbes doesn't have, well, some does, but ordinary wholemeal. So... But that is the best. So Jesus is saying, I am the bread of life. I'm the best bread you can possibly get. Look for the stuff that's good for you, nourishing and tasty and full of good things which will last. Choose the things in life that will nourish and satisfy you. The best quality, eternally lasting and life enhancing. I am the bread of life. Jack Monroe, the food writer, speaks of the time when she first visited a food bank. She had nothing for her and her son, literally nothing. Um, her shoes were, were um, filled with cardboard and, and there was literally nothing. And at the food bank, she received more than bags of tins and a choice of cereal. She, refused, she received life. She received love and acceptance and, and understanding. Her life, her soul was nourished, and God was with her there. And the bread of life. And there's a choice. But the choice may be already made for us, for others. The, the cheapest bread isn't always the best bread. I don't know if that's true. Is, I don't know, I'm not very good at reading them. Um, simply sliced wholemeal. Who said it was slightly sweeter? Somebody did, didn't they? My goodness me, it's got a lot of things in it. It's got wheat, wholemeal wheat, wheat protein, soya flour, soya flour, salt, sugar, wheat flour again, wheat flour, calcium carbonate, iron, all sorts of things. Goodness knows, tartaric acid, Oh, my goodness me. There's no sugar, actually. Well, not as I can see. It's got sodium, something or other. And, oh, dear. Car- oh, caramelized sugar. There we go. Flour treatment agent and ascorbic acid. Yeah. Um, it says it's got wheat in it. Yeah. wonder what Hovis has in it. Is it any better? What do you reckon? 
You what? It's tasty and high in fiber, a source of vitamin B1 and vitamin, oh, and low in fat. Well, it should be, shouldn't it? It's bread. And with over 130 years of baking experience, our expert bakers give you a taste of Hobie's heritage in every slice. There you go. And it's got wholemeal flour, water, wheat, protein, yeast, salt, soya fiber, preservatives, caramelized sugar, there we are, flour with added calcium, iron, niacin, 62% whole grain from whole grain flour. Is it any better? I don't know. We could go into all sorts of things looking at them, couldn't we? Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the tastiest, finest, best bread ever. Often there are barriers to receiving that bread of life. There are things we've done or not done. There are patterns of thinking and believing and ways of living. The way we see the world, each other, ourselves. There is no other bread. It's, it's man or nothing. Maybe history and fears and anxiety and guilt and regret and pain and loss are so firmly established we don't even believe we're hungry or we don't deserve to be hungry. You know, it's, it's not for me, that, that imposter syndrome stuff. But it doesn't have to be like that. Jesus is the bread of life. And as I will say in a while during our celebration of Holy Communion, the things of God for God's holy people, the table is set and all are welcome. We don't have to be destined to remain forever hungry or to eat the manna in the desert. Rather, that living bread is offered to each and every one of us. Every moment of every day, God invites us to take and eat. Not barley bread, but the bread of life. And in all the conflicts and the violence, and in the peace, thank goodness, and in the protests and the counter-protests. The voice is not of love, but of division in Gaza and Ukraine, in towns and cities across our country, in Southport, and so many other places. God offers us a new way of living. It may be a bit tangled like those dinghy races, but that new way of living, a new way of loving, Holy bread for holy hunger. David White in his poem, Loaves and Fishes, says this. This is not the age of information. This is not the age of information. Forget the news and the radio and the blurred screens. This is the time of loaves and fishes. People are hungry. And one good word is bread for the thousands. Amen. We sing again a, a hymn that we first sang uh, back in December um, during Advent. But I think it fits here just as well. Into the darkness of this world, O come, Lord Jesus, come.
come through our prayers. Let's pray. As we come to pray for our world today, and for our church, for our country, for each other. We remember how, Jesus, you had concern not for yourself, but for others. We remember how Jesus had a special place in his heart for the poor, and so we pray for the millions suffering still in poverty. Victims of failed harvests and natural disasters and war. Those crying out for help and begging for food. not just overseas, but here in our own community. And we pray for those who work so hard to alleviate poverty in our world and in our community. For those who collect and redistribute food, for volunteers and staff at our food bank, for those who provide food on Fridays, we remember how Jesus suffered at the hands of other people. And we pray for all who endure violence and cruelty. In Gaza and Ukraine. And in Southport. And Nottingham and Manchester and so many other places. We pray for victims of racism and discrimination. Those who are bullied and assaulted and tortured. In big or small ways. And we remember how Jesus lived for others and died for others and rose for all. Help us to live as Jesus lived, to serve others, to love others, to offer ourselves for other people. and to care, and to be with. We remember in our prayers those we know and know of who are in special needs today. And we remember those who have died and their families and friends and communities who mourn. We ask these and all our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen.
Our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give to you. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. As we prepare our table to celebrate our Holy Communion, we sing, eat this bread and never hunger. Praise you, Father, that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, gracious God, with this bread and these cups, we remember that our Lord offered his life for us. Believing the witness of his resurrection and ascension, we look for his coming in glory and our sharing in his great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of Christ, and that we may live to your praise and glory with all your saints in light. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers and the prayers of all your people on earth and in heaven. 
with the intercession of Christ, our great High Priest, through whom, with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all worship and honour are yours, Almighty God and Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we share in the Lord's Prayer, using whichever language or tradition is most helpful for us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The bread that we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. Christ is the bread of life. And the cup that we take is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Christ is the true vine. And so the things of God are here for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. Glory to God the Father. Amen.
Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Those who eat will never go hungry. And so we come to God and we accept this, the bread of life. And then we eat and know that we are with God. Amen. Jesus said, this is my blood shed for you. And so we take and drink and know that God is with us. Let's pray. We praise you, God, for the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation which you give for the life of the world. With this food for our journey, bring us with your saints to the feast of your glory. Amen. We come to the end of our worship for this morning. I haven't forgotten anything, have I? You get a bit out of practice when you've been on holiday. And I'm not going to be back here until the beginning of September because I'm at work this week, then I'm off to Greenbelt um, first as a steward as the site comes to life. It's, it's quite exciting. You arrive on the next Monday. Yeah, next Monday morning I will arrive and it will be green There'll be this green and pleasant land and then people will arrive and tents will go up. And by Thursday it will be a festival site. Um, and then the Monday after we all go home and it all returns to a green and pleasant land. But yes, so I won't be back with you until the 1st of September uh, when the Methodist year starts all over again. And we, uh, we do this all over again. Our last hymn this morning, God is love, let heaven adore him.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.